welcome back to my channel. This is Jerry and Stitches and I was MIA for a while but now I'm back. And today we're going to be making continuous bias binding which is a wondrous thing for any sewist to have in his or her stash because it helps you clean up your seams very neatly. So I especially found it very helpful when I was making my very first quilting project which is this thing that you see before you. This is a quilted vest and the pattern is the Fiber Mood Irma. I made some modifications to this garment and to go into all the details you can uh, check out my website which is jerryinstitches.com and in my blog there are full details of all the modifications that I made. One of the modifications is that um, I closed up the seams on the inside with bias binding and here it is so this vest um, is reversible and actually to be honest I prefer it on this side <laughs> and that's why I put the pockets also on this side of the garment and you can see from the details of the collar and the shoulder, um, I finished up the seams with bias binding and I think that the bias binding is making this color blocked uh, vest um, a statement piece. So it is like the statement detail, the bias binding on this garment. So of course you can buy bias binding from a store but I usually find that the store-bought ones are not as pliable or flexible especially if you have to close up seams that are curved or go around the bend. And uh, another reason to make your own bias binding is that you can customize your garment with whatever color that you want. And another reason is that it's a great scrap buster so if you have uh, pieces of fabric just lying around and you want to use them up, you can cut up a piece of fabric that is this big and you will see that something of this size will give you meters of bias binding. So let's get to it! It definitely helps when you're making continuous bias binding to have great cutting tools and I was lucky enough to be gifted a pair of 9 inch prison scissors by LDH Scissors. This came at a great timing and also they sent me uh, their rotary cutter which is the best one that I've used so far and this came at a timely fashion for me to make my quilted project and when making bias binding you will need some measuring tools as well so like a quiltish ruler is helpful but if you don't have something like this, a regular plastic ruler is fine as well. And I find that um, a kind of measuring tool with a right angle and a 45 degree angle uh, on the other side is also very helpful. For my quilted vest project, the bias tape that I made is 5 centimeters or 2 inches wide. And this width is really required when you're trying to go around seams that are really very thick, like a, a quilt or a quilted jacket or a vest. Uh, today we'll be making bias tape that is not so wide. Uh, we're going to go with 1 inch and 3 eighths uh, wide, which is about between three to four centimeters I think. Anyway, what I started out with is a square piece of fabric measuring 14 inches and after I've cut this out I want to measure on both opposite sides of the square uh, the midpoint uh, which is basically measuring seven inches from the end of each side. Then with my scissors, I'm going to make a notch at this mark because I'm going to line those up soon to sew it up. I'm going to use uh, this special ruler to draw a 45 degree angle right down the middle of the square, splitting up the square into two triangles. If you don't have something like this, you can just simply use a, a ruler to join up the corners together. And what I'm using is a fabric pen to mark this 45 degree angle. And I'm actually using a permanent marker because it's easier. Um, 
If you're using a marker that erases when you iron it, it might not be ideal because we're gonna be ironing um, as we are drawing. So it's, it actually doesn't matter that you're using uh, something that has permanent ink because um, the lines will disappear anyway when you're using the bias binding. So after I've drawn in the diagonal line, I am just gonna make a cut following this line that I've marked. This pair of scissors cuts like butter and on top of it, it's so pretty to look at and it just makes all this cutting pure pleasure. After that is cut, then we want to uh, flip this over so that the right sides are facing and I am going to match the notch uh, that I made earlier with the notch uh, of the other side of the triangle. Again, right sides are facing. So I'm gonna pin this up and then sew it at a quarter inch on this edge. When the edges are matched up, the fabric pieces look like this on top of one another and remember to keep the notches matched up when you sew the quarter inch seam. Once sewn, open up the seam and give it a good press. Then the seam should be trimmed even further, reducing it to one eighth of an inch. Some people like to trim the seam before pressing, but I prefer to press then trim both sides of the seam because it's easier to press the seam open this way. Once the seam is trimmed, then we're ready to draw in the width of the bias binding in rows parallel to this diagonal. I keep drawing the rows till I reach the opposite diagonal edge and I can now cut whatever width I want the bias binding to be. So if it's two inches, then I keep drawing lines at two inch intervals, but I am going for a narrower bias today at one and three eighths inch. Now I'm lining up the ruler properly to draw in my first line and after the first, I just keep going. I filled up the piece of fabric with lines at equal intervals and often I would find that the last strip of bias that I've drawn is not of equal width as the rest. Most of the time it measures less than the others and the simple thing to do here is to just cut that out, uh, the last strip off and remove it. Now I have to sew up these two ends together and before I bring it to the machine, I like to draw in the quarter inch seam allowance on both ends. This really helps me to align the bias lines that I've just drawn so that they match up perfectly from one end to the next. With the seam allowance drawn in on both ends, I can now match up the seam line. Basically, I am bringing the two ends together to form a tube with the fabric. The instinct is to want to match up the rows together, but it's important here to stagger the rows by shifting one row over at the end. I use the cross point at the seam line to help me match up the bias tape lines. Remember to stagger the rows shifting one row over. So I position the pins in a way that matches one cross point on one side of the fabric with the corresponding cross point on the other side of the fabric. And I continue matching these cross points all along this seam line. And I want to linger here a little bit showing you this whole process because this is one of the most important uh, steps of this task so that the bias tape lines are going to match up when we start to cut it up. And the video is now going to jump forward to the end of this task and I want to show you what it looks like pinned up just before bringing it to the machine to sew up this seam. As you can see, all the cross points are now matched up nicely on the seam line and this is now ready to be sewn up at the machine. Okay, so I've sewn up the quarter inch seam and I pressed it open and the next thing is to trim up the seam allowance. But I just want to show you how the lines match up from one triangle to the next when we are careful about matching up the cross points at the quarter inch seam. 
Again, I am trimming the seam and when that's done, we're ready to cut out the bias tape. I place one hand through the tube to get a better hold on the fabric and start cutting along the bias tape lines with a good pair of scissors. This is why I'm so happy that these scissors arrived from LDH Scissors just in time for me to make this video. And if you find this content helpful, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up and ring that bell to be notified of future postings. You can see that I am cutting in a spiraling motion which will produce a continuous length of bias tape. And bias tape is cut on the true bias which gives the tape elasticity and flexibility to wrap around the curves and bends in your Me Made garment. I love working with it because it gives such an elegant and clean finish at the seams. And now we are making the last cut and we will see the length of bias tape that we managed to produce with a 14 inch square of fabric. And can you guess how many meters that is? Three full meters, which is ready to use for many future projects to come. And before I go, I want to show off my new vest with seams completely finished with bias binding. I like to wear it open or cinched in with a me made obi belt and this is what it looks like on the actual side of the quilted vest which is also very cute but I am definitely more attracted to the reverse side and I think I'm going to wear it more inside out because I love how the bias tape is the star of the show here. My favorite detail is the back collar where I think the bias tape really shines and I'm going to hold it up so that you can see the close up details of all the bias binding in this garment and thanks for watching and see you soon i'm so happy and happy sewing